Evans. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, start with announcements, open session, and public comments. Do we have any? I, I have one, which we'll talk about a little bit later too, but as a public announcement, I just wanted to bring to everyone's attention on April the 14th at 5 p.m., there's a Zoom meeting uh, on Herring River Restoration Project. It's a, it's a joint meeting, including um, the Wellfleet Conservation Commission and the Truro. Uh, it's, it's an outgrowth of, uh, they, they are filing or have filed their notice of intent, which really, I guess, kicks off the permitting process. To, uh, I'll characterize it as the final permitting process. I think that's accurate. Um, so anyway, that's a meeting. And on the agenda, a little further down, we have some other items to talk about with respect to uh, the dredging task force supporting Herring River Restoration Project and their uh, efforts in permitting. Uh, administrative uh, roll call so far, I, we have Allgaier, Annette, Coakley, Pickard, Reinhardt, and Sullivan. And, and I see Joe Aberdale just joined. Uh, next and of course, item. I also have the entire application at Town Hall, if anyone wants to see it for the notice of intent. It's enormous, but it's there if anyone wants to see it. And, and where is it? I'm sorry. It's upstairs in my office at Town Hall. Oh, OK. Yep. Herring okay. River uh, dropped it off this morning. It's, like I said, enormous, but it's there for any of the public to come in and view if they want to. OK. And just circling back on uh, roll call, uh, Kurt Felix just joined us. <clears throat> um, next item uh, administratively is review and approval of the minutes of meeting from our uh, March 14th one. So if you need a few minutes to review and or refresh, go ahead and take it and then we can entertain a motion to accept. I make a motion to accept the minutes of the meeting uh, from March 14, 2000. I second that. Okay, thank you guys. Go ahead and vote. Uh, Alfred? Aye. Kurt? Aye. Kevin? Aye. Skip? Aye. Joe? Aye. Chris? Aye. Okay. Uh, next item is an update on the permit uh, and lobbyist activity. Uh, Will, can you give us an update on that, please? I think, Pref uh, preferably an after, unmuted one. <laughs> yeah, I think after last couple weeks ago, our meeting, we uh, talked about the permit. Nothing's really been happening with that yet we're just kind of waiting on hold for the mitigation credits um and the lobbyist um on, it's on the same front he's no real no real updates on permit activities and and i agree although we had that update last meeting maybe just to refresh everyone the the mitigation credits are are being reviewed under the guise of accepting uh, either Hilda or Hilda and the Conservation uh, Trust acreage as being complete offsets uh, to sa in satisfaction of the mitigation credits. 
And I, I think at the last time we weren't sure whether they were going to be sufficient to offset, but um, I gather that we're getting a little more confident that uh, certainly those two properties would, uh, would offset it 100%. That's fantastic. That's a big, big step forward. Yeah. Chris, just, just to be clear about the mitigation, uh, basically a swap, correct? It, it's a swap for the acreage that uh, supposedly uh, the mooring field is going to take up to the credits of Indian Neck and Hilgar and the upland part of it. Yeah, I would, I would say it's a little more convoluted than a swap. Uh, and I say convoluted because there's a calculation, there's a ratio, uh, depending on the type of land that we're proposing, it, it's not a one for one swap. It, it's not. Or, no. In what, in the, no in so for example, just to put it in perspective, the, the acreage for mooring area two is like 23.4 acres. Mm -hmm. The intertidal portion of Hilda Trust is 110 acres. So it, it's not a one for one swap and, and typically never is on a mitigation. There's various ratios. In, in per our last meeting, we were talking, they were talking about uh, not having the town of Wellfleet involved basically in it. It was either Mass Fisheries or Audubon. Uh, correct, as a monitoring plan. Monitoring of what? Well, that it, it remains undeveloped. It remains in accordance with the agreement. Um, so, so that would limit Hilda on um, shellfish grants? It would limit it on development. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. Um, I well, think on shellfish grants development? Yeah, well, the existing ones, I think, are certainly not an issue because the Army Corps is well aware of it. Uh, we'll have to get clarity about the future. The three, the three that are on there now that, that got in before the monitorium. The well, yeah, the the ones that transferred with the land, I guess, it might be the way I would view it. Um, yeah, I don't see it that way, but that's okay. Well, I mean, they're they're not new; they've been there. It was there? No, there's there's three that are new in there now, that came in before the monitorium. The Vasco was one of them that are, is a new grant on that. But anyhow, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to know if that would. If right. it would limit the, the the shellfish on that area, yeah. And in our last meeting, Kurt, you raised a question about whether a deed restriction or, or conservation restriction might might be a path forward. And and I believe it is. I think uh, we'll follow up on that with GEI and or the Corps, and uh, that is a viable option, as I understand it. So. Uh, that was a good suggestion you had, Kurt. Kurt, is the conservation a separate entity, basically from the town? Well, if you if you put a deed restriction on the property, what it is is it's an in perpetuity um, development restriction, and the property normally in the town the properties are reverting to the Wealthy Conservation Trust. So, uh, you know, that's the independent organization that then oversees the administration of those deed restrictions and make sure that they're complying and make sure that somebody's not you know putting something on the land etc so there's an you know there's a monitoring mechanism through the conservation trust which you know everybody you know which these other organizations recognize so it's a legitimate conservation restriction and it's enforced um, the second through part the conservation of, trust correct yeah through the conservation trust you know, well, it could be monitored by. Uh, we kicked around three names, I think, last time: Mass Fish and Wildlife, Audubon, or Conservation Trust. I, I think any of those three would be acceptable. Yeah, and um, going back to your question, Kevin, um, it, it's not clear to me what you know whether whether grants would be considered development because it's subtitled land. Um, yeah. 
and it's you know typically grants are an improvement um, in an area, and they can't be they can't be allowed unless there's a lack of shellfish there to begin with. So the the land is designated as shellfish habitat, and if um, there's there's a below a certain threshold of shellfish there. Uh, then the, the the land could become available for grant or for use as a shellfish grant. So in, in essence, that would be improving, you know, the shellfish resource. So, it, you know, I, I, you, I don't think you could put a, you couldn't put a pier or a revetment or, you know, something like that in there. That would clearly be development, but uh, grants, um, I mean, I don't know that as a practical matter, there's much um, opportunity for additional grants. I mean, I've had some conversations with, with many shellfish people and Nancy and other constables in the past, but um, you know, their, their view is that, is that there's not a lot of additional land that's available for grant. Um, you know, with the, with the Hilda Trust, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but it's kind of a long-winded answer, but I think, um, you know, we could and should get clarification from the core uh, on that particular issue, but it's really the upland portion of Hilda that I think they're counting as an offset, and um, you know that going into into deed restriction potentially. If I understand, is that right, Chris? I, I think so, but I'm not conversant enough on on the whether or not the grants represent development or not. I I just don't know. So I'm just going to throw it out there that I don't think they do. I think that the mitigation is for uh, doesn't want, you know, housing structures, as you said, like a pier or something else going in. But the shellfish rack should not constitute structure. Or development. Yeah, development. Yeah. Are more considered uh, the development? A mooring? Like a, like a rack. Uh, well, no, uh, development would have to be a permanent structure, like a pier, um, yeah. a groin, um, you know, something that was something that was installed or built. Yeah. Something that would change the natural flow of water, kind of. I'm just throwing that out there. But I think, Chris, the, you know, this came up last time, I think, um, it would be helpful to have something, you know, I think in writing from the core so that we at least understand that, um, yes. you know, shellfish grants are not considered development under this agreement. Agreed. Yeah. We'll follow up on that. Cause I mean, so many times government entities come back and they say, oh no, 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 wait a second. No, no, no. We thought X, Y, Z. Yeah. <laughs> They might be amenable now and they may change their mind later. Okay. Uh, next item is 2022 dredging plans and uh, no other update on that from me, uh, other than a reminder that at our last meeting, we came to the conclusion that uh, since we're gonna split mooring area two into two seasons, uh, the first season we would plan to do approximately half the square footage to the full depth. Um, huh. You know, the alternative was do the whole thing to half depth, but anyway, so I think that probably remains our consensus. Do we have like um, a timeline for the different aspects of say once we get the permit, we know that's not yet determined, but when we have to have the um, all the all the other ingredients like of issues for advertising, bidding. Uh, yeah, in, in general, I might be off a couple of days, but uh, early June we'd want to go out uh, for bids. Get <clears throat> them back about the end of June, then then we have July to look at them. I'd like to give uh, the successful bidder a little more time to mow than we did last year. And I think, really it, think it actually, Skip, that's a good point. Maybe in our next meeting or, or the one thereafter, we, we start focusing on the specific dates. But 
Yeah, we don't um, want nominally, numbers. it'd be good to be out for bid during the month of June. Because then Alfred will tell us the next year that we let something slide by. No, I, I my question is, are we really going to have dredging this year? Well, the permit issue is obviously the, uh, that's the key to it. And, and it's by no means a shoe in, uh, but I do think we should stay on course so that everything else is in place and ready to go. Um, I don't, I don't disagree. I, I've had customers already ask if, about not putting their boats in because they don't want to come out early. I mean, I, I, I have a concern with that, with the fact that if they don't go in the water and we, we don't have dredging, we're going to look bad. If they're in the way, we're going to look worse. I mean, it's one of those things that the cart before the horse or vice versa. Yeah. Well, I, I think the best thing is to obviously make, make sure they're aware that there is uncertainty on it and, and then they'll have to make their own decision based on the risk and the uncertainty. We, you know, we we're certainly not in a position to, to guarantee it either way. And the dredge window is after the, after the high season. Um, yeah, they, I think to Alfred's point, it, to, to start dredging, especially in Area 2, uh, October 1st, we want to have all the boats out, pick a date, September 15th. So I guess that rep represents the shortening of the season, and, and I believe that's what the concern is that they're expressing to Alfred. Is Do I have that right, Alfred? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, you know, nominally it's a two week, uh, potential two week shortening of the season. And like I said, the best we can do is let people know there is some uncertainty and then they'll, they'll have to make their own decisions. Okay, next item is the uh, 2022 funding grants and specifically the EOHED Massachusetts dredging program. Uh, we talked about it last time. I've sent a couple of drafts around uh, so that we could formulate what will go in. Uh, it's an online portal this year, and the portal did open on or before April 4th. Uh, we've populated our application on the portal with about, oh, I don't know, 90, maybe 95% of the information. We have about four or five items that we're just chasing down to confirm the accuracy of it. And, uh, you know, we'll finish populating the portal and certainly have it submitted uh, before the 15th of April, which is the due date. Chris, Who I, helps you with that, Chris? Excuse me? Who helps you with that, Rebecca, roughly? Uh, or, Rebecca did and uh, Will provided and Will, information yeah. and Nancy provided information. Um, yeah. And Skip had some comments on it. Uh, speaking of which, actually, I'm glad one of the comments, uh, it's applicable to the application, but uh, to the broader scope, you know, we've always been uh, calling our stuff black mayonnaise, black custard, um, or at least I have interchangeably. But if you Google it, and so you know it must be true if it's on the internet, <laughs> if you Google it, uh, and this is what Skip brought to my attention, Black mayonnaise has a, has a definition, particularly one that it was uh, was spawned by its appearance down in the Gowanus Canal in New York, and it's considered a toxic substance. In some cases, it has heavy metals. Totally different from our black custard, and you know we, I think, the Center for Coastal Studies actually yeah. coined ours a few years back as black custard in, in order to make that distinction. So. Uh, going forward, we have black custard. Okay. And besides, yes. that's easier to spell than mayonnaise. But you can go to the place where you take your dog to and it gets through a black custard bath. <laughs> yeah, you, you might be the only one who believes that story. <laughs> it, um, yeah, but that's obviously also very important because Agnes Minnemeyer did characterize it so that for purposes of uh, placing it anywhere, yes, um, she's already determined that it's that it's toxin free. 
Yes. Yeah. And and that's the that's a very important distinction, and, and we need to capture that in in adopting a more um, representative name for it. Uh, Chris, going back to the the application um, in section five, supporting the blue economy, um, I, I you know I did kind of read through it, uh, and it looked to me like we've got um, we've got a description here. It says. Um, does the harbor, right, 5.1, does the harbor support commercial fishing? And it says, do not, um, underline, do not include aquaculture shell fishing in this question. And then our answer was, well, fleet ranked number two for commercial shellfish landings in the Commonwealth. I think what they're trying to get at there is fish landings exclusively, because um, this 5.2 is then about uh, aquaculture. Yes, yeah, I, I, there are separate sections on it. I can go back and revisit 5.1, and so far as the landings, uh, <clears throat> that shows up uh, or will show up on a separate sheet that Nancy has provided, similar to last year. So um, I'll go back to 5.1. Uh, Kurt, in the meantime, if, if you have suggested rewording, I, I would certainly welcome it. Okay, um, I think I think we just have to have fish landings. I mean, I don't have the data, but it's it would be commercial fish landings as opposed to shellfish. Yeah, and shellfish is captured under five point two. Yeah, I can send you the spreadsheet that Nancy provided, and you can take a look at that in conjunction with uh, any rewording and and editing that you propose. So that, and, that's a good item. And the other thing that would be included in there, obviously, is our charter char uh, commercial charter operations. So, again, I don't have the I don't have the data, but those would be the two components, I think. Commercial charters do I know we do reference it somewhere else. Uh, I think also in the chart. Or uh, Kurt, are you suggesting that it uh, that we should reference it in five point one as well? I think five point one because those are those are fish landings. Um, 5.3 is does the harbor support support commercial boating, you know, charter head boats, tour boats, tugboats, ferry shipping vessels, et cetera. Yeah. But I think it's fish landings that they want in 5.1. Uh, and yeah. when you say commercial charter, you mean uh, fishing charters? Yeah, because it's yeah, very yeah. exclusive. Okay. It's exclusively 5.1, I think, is exclusively fish landings. And then 5.2 is aquaculture and shellfish landings. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if you would take a look at it, but in, in I will send you the spreadsheet I got from Nancy, which uh, quantifies the landings, the fish. Okay, landings. yeah, and I'm happy to, if I have the data, I'm happy to try to write it up. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's see, number six, uh, future plans to reduce sedimentation and future maintenance dredging. Um, so this is where I did want to make the, the distinction between mayonnaise and custard. The other key thing here for now is actually the next agenda item, the sand and the shoaling in the area of the breakwater. Uh, unless someone has uh, comments or discussion about the sedimentation, you know, we're still looking for an opportunity to do thin layer deposition um, and, and a, practice, a practice round sometime in the in a year or so. Um, Kurt, I know you had your eyes on a possible location, so I guess if you would stay focused on that. Yeah, the, de the demonstration location, which would, would make some sense, would be a baby step, is um, the area to the west of uh, the Elephant House. Yes, yeah. Between Powers Landing and the Elephant House. Right. So I, I don't think we need to discuss that aspect much more tonight, but we should stay focused on what would it take in terms of permission from owners and uh, any any concerns that they might have. So as we work through this over the next half a year or so, or year, uh, we should try and focus and, and come up with a demonstration location. All right, uh, the sand and shoaling area at the breakwater. Uh, we have a request for quotation RFQ 
uh, pretty much ready to go out. I imagine it'll go out in the next week or two. It's with Rebecca. And this is a request for quotation for engineering services to do some drawings and identify the permits that would be required and, and to uh, do the application for those permits. We envision this to be, you know, we'll be seeking multi-year permits so we don't have to get them every year. Um, fiscally speaking, this, the timetable for this would be in June such that any award would be after July 1st, you know, the new fiscal year. Chris, I didn't get a chance, didn't get a chance to look through the, um, the RFQ, but does it buy the, does it buy um, the uh, area next to the, next to the L pier with the area next to um, the groin, the, the breakwater? Um, so is it? No, I think it's totally silent on the L pier because we had said before we, you know, that's already its own permit and we didn't want to conflate them. Right. Um, but I think my recollection was after we talked to Hillary, it made sense to put them together because the, they're, those, the L pier permits are expiring anyway. If I remember the conversation correctly. So I don't, I don't know, I didn't look through the RFQ, but my recollection was that it, it did make sense to put them together, you know, under yeah, I, uh, permits. She was looking at, uh, she's trying to find the existing permit. Uh, so I've not seen how that reads uh, and or what kind of a timeline it's on. I th you're probably right though, it's probably at or close to expiration. Um, I'll circle back on that and see. Uh, like I said, I, I, I don't think it's in there because it was already in place, but if it makes sense to add it, and it probably does, we can do so. I thought you were right, Chris, because one was just a renewal and one would be a new permit, but uh, it'd be best to check, just check again with Hillary. Yeah. Yeah, I think Hillary, Hillary was anxious to try to get them together because she, um, the engineering work associated with um, extend, you know, extending those permits is this is a sec is effectively the same. You know, so you could get the same company in doing both. Yeah, uh, if if the existing one is close to expiration, then it, it makes sense. It, I, I think at the time we were hesitant because we we didn't want to screw up or delay uh, an existing permit, you know, by linking it with ours, but we, we can go back and revisit that. The, the permit at the L pier, what is the dates on that that we can use that, Will? That, that's what we're waiting to find out with the new permit. Yeah, that's what Hillary was going to look up because she she was thinking that they're that they're um, they are close to expiration, and so if we're going to do this other work, that we ought to characterize the L pier at the same time um, and get them under a, a common permit, so we we don't do have to do the work twice. I, I guess my concern, is, my, Go concern ahead, is, my concern is if we're going to lease that piece of property out to somebody, are we going to screw ourselves for dredging? What do you mean, Alfred, if we're going to lease what? Well, under the dredge permit we have now, we have to put it in front of Max, the water, where we can truck it away. So if we give up that piece of property, we better make sure that we don't give it up at the same time we need it for dredging. You're talking about where the, uh, where the picnic tables are? Absolutely. Yeah. Because I believe unless we're going to get the permit changed, which is a possibility, I don't know. My problem is if we can't put the sand there because of we, we've leased the property out to somebody else, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. Historically, I think we've, we've always done the LPR 
area dredging, uh, certainly in the fall on into winter when it's non-competing. No, we've done it in the spring. Okay, early enough that it's still non-competing or are we bumping up against it sometimes? I'm not so sure that we have, I don't think, I don't want to be quoted, but I believe at some point everything in our harbor dictates the dates, not what we when we want to do it. We have to make sure that all the fawning and all the other stuff leaves the window yeah, yeah. that we still yeah. have that piece of property. That's all. I mean, because the dredge permit we have now is very specific. Unless I'm wrong, Will, that it has to has to be dewatered there. Yeah, but but I, I don't think it ever really conflicted with any movement over at Max. Oh, they complained a couple springs that the stuff was there, so they couldn't open early enough. But didn't the didn't the board of selectmen already approve Max um, new lease? Oh. <laughs> It's not a lease, it's a license. Well, I just, I, I'm not saying we shouldn't give them something or take it away or not do anything. My concern is unless we have an alternative place to put that stuff for dewatering, we're screwed if we don't still have control of that during the dates the permit's going to set forward. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. Yeah. Offered, I'm, not, I'm not sure who who owns it though. I think the board of selectmen on that in terms of um, what they're doing with Max. You know the discussion around Max lease. So, I don't want to. I don't want to be part of that. I'm just saying. I hope we didn't shoot ourselves in the foot. So, um, so I'd have to look at the lease. And did we? Did do you guys need the whole thing or just how you know? half the lower half going down to the water or has that even been decided or it it depends on how much you can dig in a day and the, and the weather and they pile it up starting three feet from the the walkway some years and some years they start in the middle it all depends on how much sand that that's that's a question that uh -huh. I mean, a question that acts actually asks more questions because it all depends on how much sands float. It depends on whether we did it last year, whether we're trying to do it for two. I mean, I, I don't know. But I, I suspect the idea of cohabitating there, meaning us dredging and Max having customers, we, regardless of the quantity, I, I think it would be difficult to cohabitate, you know, whether it's 300 yards or 600 yards, you got a piece of equipment in there. Um, no, you, we, we can't cohabitate. Yeah. Not for that period. Yeah, so so whether we need the lower half or the, or the lower and the upper, I, I think is moot. I think we need to get clarification on uh, if there are restricted windows on the calendar. Yeah, do we know, uh, do, we don't have any idea when we would wanna do that, right? Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's town land, but as, um, you know, as Alfred said, the, the dredging window is, is um, dictated by you know dictated by species migrations etc so it's already it's already sort of codified so it it's verifiable yeah right right and it's and it's town land i mean it's it's not Mac, you know it's not max land it's town land and mac has a lease so i would think um i i think alfred your concern is just to make sure that there's um clear um language regarding the town using its own land during certain windows in the spring and fall for uh, dredge dewatering. I, uh, yes. Yeah. Which makes sense. Which we should have, we, which we should have done <laughs> with a date before we actually leased it out or, or well, licensed it or whatever we did. Let's, let's look at it. I'll, I'll check out on it tomorrow and uh, let's look at it before we, uh, worry about it. Let's see what it actually says and what it means. Did the board actually approve something, Janet? I mean, yeah. there was discussion. There was something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, Janet, you'll follow up on that to see if there's anything in the lease in the way of 
defined windows that access, et cetera. Yeah, if, yeah. if uh, I mean, I don't think in the least, I don't think there's, there was anything said about the town not disturbing the area of the picnic tables. I mean, it wasn't, there was nothing explicit at all. It was just like releasing this and they're responsible for trash and, you know, cleaning the picnic tables and the benches and things like that. But I don't think there's anything about us disturbing the beach. And um, I mean, it's a good thing that we would be doing that. So I can't imagine people complaining and is it is it going to be like in high season or do we know even when it's going to be we don't know that yet do we spring and fall spring and fall so that's that's probably um the spring and so, fall dredge windows yeah so that i don't i i actually don't see I, i'll just um i'll just check on it but i don't see i'm writing this down um I don't see a conflict. I would even think more people would come down there and get food to watch the to watch the sand be put up on the shore. People usually like doing that stuff, so it might be a bonus. But I'll check on it. It's not going to be a bonus if the picnic tables aren't there, Janet. <laughs> and yeah, actually, the you know, pile of sand was bigger than the building last time. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it was pretty big. Pile. But so okay, so in the fall, it the least it just goes to labor day i think i'll have to check on that um, all right let us know yeah so alfred it was a big pile but uh, it didn't exceed 300 yards right yeah we never we, we never exceed our permit i understood <laughs> <laughs> okay um next item to talk about is the um i mentioned it during public announcements is the upcoming Herring River Restoration Project Notice of Intent and their Zoom meeting at 5 p.m. Uh, on the 14th. Um, and in addition to that, uh, Carol Ridley reached out to see if we on the dredging task force um, would, would um, support their efforts there, both the permitting and obviously the project itself. So um, open up for discussion. The Herring River project is our uh, primo destination for all of our high quality black custard. So uh, there certainly is a benefit to us as judging people. I get the feeling that at the meeting, it's between the Truro and the Wellfleet um, Conservations Commissions to bring them up to date. And I think uh, that the fact that we're cooperating, dredging, Herring River, uh, town, they're all cooperating and everything and that we're all okay with it. And um, there shouldn't be, uh, there really shouldn't be large problems with like once they open it up, maybe some shellfish might be affected. Nobody really knows, but I think it's really just to tell both conservation commissions that everybody's uh, crossing their T's and dotting their I's. And we all know about, we all know what each other one's doing. Well, that, that, yeah, that's a behavioral thing, which I agree with you. The question is, uh, do we want to pass a motion that just uh, says the dredging task force um, su supports the Herring River Restoration Project, including their recent notice of intent. Yeah, that makes it pretty yeah. clear as to what's going to happen and doesn't tie us into other issues that might come up. Yeah, I think that's the I think that's the motion, Chris. You know, I would I would. Uh, I would second that motion. Let me, I'm just scribbling it down then I'll try and read it back and you, you guys can edit. ETF supports the Herring River Restoration Project and the recent NOI.
I guess, but maybe just that, huh? DTS yeah. supports the uh, Herring River Restoration Project and the uh, recent notice of intent filed by Herring River. I think I was going to, I was thinking we could do a letter or something like that, but the more I thought about it, um, we may get into issues that the, the cons comms may not be too happy about or may have differing opinions about. Um, so I don't think we, I think that, I think we just, the simpler, the better. Except when that keeps it neutral. Yeah, and if we start to get into like the benefits as far as thin layer, potential thin layer deposition, all that other stuff. Oh, no. Oh, they may have, they may have concerns about that, so. And just include cooperating. Yeah. That's, that they want to know that dredging isn't going to interfere with the Herring River and the Herring River is not going to interfere with dredging and. Where, where do you want to insert that in the motion? Can you read the motion? The dredging task force supports the Herring River Restoration Project and the recent notice of intent filed by Herring River Restoration Project. How about supports and cooperates or do a second line? Supports and looks forward to cooperating um, and will cooperate whatever that you've had meetings with them. Uh, it's hard to do this on Zoom. <laughs> and and we'll cooperate with the permitting effort. Yes. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Um, the only other thing I can think of is that the project may have benefits toward uh, reducing future dredging needs. It, it does, but I don't think I would complicate the motion them. tonight. I mean, we, we've said that and other people have said that. And I think as we go forward, um, that, that certainly is one of the underlying reasons why we support it. But if you if you think it should be in the motion, then reword it. Well, it's just I want to throw it out there just because the cons comms may like that. But I'd be careful about putting too many things into it that can then be we have to support it with some more substantiation. It should be clean and neutral. And then I think Janet's right. We say we're cooperating with. That's a key thing. There you have it. Sounds like a plan. You want to read it back, Chris? Yeah, uh, Dredging Task Force supports the Herring River Restoration Project and the recent notice of intent filed by Herring River Restoration Project and DTF will cooperate with the permitting effort. Or even we might even say, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll cooperate does cooperate because in mm -hmm. a way we're already cooperating saying well, that that's why I, had to say that. Yeah. I was gonna say we'll continue to yeah 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 that's the right way to put it because yeah. like the true consecom isn't even concerned about what's going on here and i think i mean i don't know who's new if anyone's new on the consecom in wellfleet but um I think it's it's um, I think it's just to update everybody. It's not going to be a discussion or problems. It's really just bringing them up to date on what's going on with the land exchange and flooding here and moving stuff there. So um, yeah, and maybe filling them in that some of the dredging spoils will go in appropriate places. Okay, I believe there's a motion on the table. <laughs> Seconded. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We, it needs to be moved. Someone needs to move it. Well, you, I thought you did. No, I was just making an observation that it's out there. <laughs> I'm happy to move it. Sure. Second. I second it. Okay. Go ahead and vote. So I have to look at my crib sheet here. Alfred. 
he leave? Yeah, he left. Okay. Um, Kurt. Hi. Skip. Hi. Kevin. Hi. Joe. Hi. Chris. Hi. So five to zero on that one. Okay, next item is uh, to schedule our next dredging task force meeting. Uh, looking ahead to some of the upcoming Mondays, we have, well, we have May 2nd, May 9th, May 16th. Any, any preference or um, conflicts on any of those dates? Well, is there anything that's gonna be resolved that would be appropriate to be discussed at the next meeting where, I mean, if we don't want to be spending just going to meetings, if there's, Agreed. If there's not something that we can meet. Yeah. Well, that. well, to that, to your point and your question there, Skip, I would say that it wouldn't, ha it wouldn't have to be as early as May 2nd. So I, I would say we could kick the can down the road at least one week to the ninth and maybe later for the reasons you state. So I'd go for the ninth. Ninth works for me. Ninth is good. Any, any, objections? any objections to the ninth? Okay, ninth it is, usual time, 7 p.m. Now we need one more motion tonight. The ever popular motion to adjourn. So moved. Kurt, second. Kevin. I'll second it. Uh, looks like Alfred already voted AI. <laughs> um, Kurt. Aye. Devin. Aye. Skip. Aye. Joe. Aye. Chris, aye, also five zero. Okay, that's it, everybody. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank, Good night. You. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Chris. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.